For more on this, I want to bring in Todd Bensman now, the senior national security fellow for the Center for Immigration Studies and the author of Overrun, How Joe Biden Unleashed the Greatest Border Crisis in U.S. History. Todd, good to have you with us, sir. Great to be here. Thank you. A little noticed, I think, in the American press this week, but but uh, I saw it towards the end of an NBC News report, and uh, and then I picked up and I was like, wait a second. So AMLO gave this big speech on Monday or, or a press conference where he straight up says, yeah, no, this is just an election year ploy. It's all going to go back to the way it was immediately after the election. What do you think of that? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, this was um, what we talked about on your show the last time, I believe, uh, that, you know, I think it's the Biden campaign that's running the policy now at the border. Uh, we are in the season. It is silly season now. And uh, the Biden administration and especially the campaign doesn't want to see 10,000, 12,000, 14,000 apprehensions a day down at that border anymore. It's just absolutely terrible optics at a time when American cities are all complaining and begging for handouts and bailouts and everything over this mass migration crisis. And uh, especially among Democratic constituencies in those communities, Yes, uh, you know, the black and Latino communities in all of these big cities are saying we're voting Republican next time over this. So I do believe that um, this is a ploy uh, by the campaign uh, to use diplomacy for political purposes, for electoral purposes, actually. And the Mexican government knows it. Yeah. So so the Mexican government is uh, is giving assistance here to uh, the Biden administration. I see a report today from uh, Ali Bradley over at News Nation, and this is exactly in line with what you've been saying, Todd Bensman. Uh, she says exclusive information from sources within Border Patrol confirmed that different Mexican law enforcement agencies are now pulling migrants from trains throughout Mexico that are headed north to the U.S. border in just one day. 435 migrants were pulled from 20 different trains, according to the report. Sources say migrants are pushed back south to start their journey again, slowing the crossings into Texas substantially. So the Mexican government is trying to pull its weight right now on behalf of the Biden campaign, apparently. Yeah, that's it's. this is just, uh, you know, late confirmation of the reports that Center for Immigration Studies did two weeks ago that – after all of this diplomacy, uh, suddenly Obrador got very interested in going medieval on illegal immigration for the first time in three years. Uh, and it's because they got something uh, or they were threatened by something. The biggest mystery, uh, maybe the biggest state secret yes. in, in uh, global diplomacy right now is what that was. What is that thing? Um, yeah, we, we saw that they were thing? demanding money, tens of billions of dollars. Uh, and there was a you know, there's I I really want to credit the Center for Immigration Studies for drawing my attention to this, because in one sense, we're staring into the crystal ball and we're looking ahead. We're saying, man, they're going to all of a sudden you're going to see this election year slowdown of the illegal migration into the country. And Biden's going to take credit for it, quite obviously. Oh, I'm getting it under control, uh, he'll claim. But I, it is interesting, Todd Bensman, that. In December, Tony Blinken and others say that they had their vacation plans disrupted when they were suddenly sent to Mexico for this summit, where we heard publicly that Mexico was interested in getting a lot of money out of the United States. Uh, and uh, we don't but we don't know at this hour whether or not they did, do we? No, and I'm guessing that both of those gentlemen were extremely angry with uh, Joe Biden's campaign manager, who probably orchestrated the ruination of their uh, holiday plans, making them go down to Mexico. This is a political move. It's obvious what it is. I'm just going to call it for what it is. And I think the Mexican president is calling it for what it is as well. But I just want to point out, though, that the 5,000 a day that are still crossing, uh, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 a day that are still crossing is catastrophic. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that Jay Johnson, the former DHS secretary, said if I got a thousand a day, uh, I was going to have a very bad day and we would, you know, it would swamp all of our infrastructure. So five times that amount is still a huge amount. And yes, the northern cities are getting no relief. They're still going to be under this tremendous pressure. And one thing I'll, I noticed in the Senate 
deal where they were trying to cut a deal with the senators, the Republican senators, uh, that there was $13 billion in that deal to uh, bail out all these cities. That's gotten almost no attention. They're begging for federal bailouts. Another uh, blue state bailout? That's right. And that's in there. Yeah. So this is – so the, let me talk about the 5,000 number because that's also apparently in there. All the reporting demonstrates that the Republicans in the Senate who are a part of this, uh, uh, led by James Lankford and, of course, at the um, – who was deputized by Mitch McConnell to run the immigration negotiation. The bill apparently accommodates up to 5,000 illegal immigrants a day before any sort of border security measures meaningfully kick in. Um, that – as far as I can tell, that's an amnesty, Todd Bensman. It is, and it it also, you know, on the for the Republican side, it benchmarks what the Republicans are willing to tolerate a high level of illegal immigration that they're willing to benchmark as within their tolerance level. That's just flat wrong. The tolerance level should be zero uh, illegal crossings, uh, and and they should be flipping the uh, the coin on them and saying, uh, listen, you know, we want to see 20,000 deportations a month. You don't get a deal on this. We have 20,000 deportations a month or, or something higher than that. We want to start seeing deportations. There's no talk at all in any of this no. about how the Republicans would compel the president to enforce his agreement with them. Number one. And number two, if I can just quickly say, I know I'm not the only one saying this, but it doesn't hurt to reiterate that the president already has it within his authority. He does not need legislation at all. He has the legislation to completely shut down that border at his whim to turn back everybody who's crossing 100 percent of them right now in INA. Uh, Section uh, 12F, go look it up. Uh, He has that, and it's just absurd that they're negotiating for a power, uh, for an agreement from the president to do a power that he already has and should be doing. So it's just terrible negotiation. I don't, I think they just don't know, or they, I, I can't figure out what they're thinking about over there. They need to flip the coin yes. and say you get no Ukraine money at all unless you start – we want to see 30,000 deportations so, so, and nobody coming in. OK, so as, as you point out – and you're right. It's this, this the appropriate thing to point out that, that Joe Biden already has the power to secure the border. He refuses to do it. In fact, he's doing the opposite. He's auctioning off the pieces of the border wall that Trump purchased, and he's breaking through the border wall that Texas keeps assembling. That's crystal clear. But there are legislative things that can be done, Todd Bensman, that would assist in the nation's border security. Uh, and a lot of them, as I understand it, were found in H.R. 2, uh, originally passed by the House Republicans, that would do things like requiring employers nationwide to use E-Verify to make sure that the people who are working for them are not illegal foreign nationals. And other things like that that would be helpful for America's immigration system to get back on track. Agreed. E-Verify is really um, uh, an Achilles heel for the Republicans. There are a lot of Republicans that love the slave labor coming in. Uh, That's just the truth. E-Verify threatens that cheap labor source for them. And so that's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's why you don't hear the Republicans or the Democrats really talking about E-Verify because it is absolutely impactful uh, and effective at reducing the uh, tractor beam pull on illegal immigration in this country. That's, that is a silver bullet right there. That is one of the silver bullets. Uh, but you won't hear the Republicans ever talk about that. No. In fact, it was a, a, a budget ceiling negotiation a few months ago where even in the House, uh, the one thing that the House was willing, the Republicans were willing to remove from the, that particular round of negotiations was E-Verify. That was the one thing they took out, you know, on that particular debate. Tells you a lot. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But 
But but, but it is but in I, HR too. Not- to the to the credit of the Republicans who passed this bill, it exists. But I, I guess uh, I guess the explanation for that would be that they consider it to be a messaging bill, knowing it's not going to pass in the Senate. Yeah, it could be. We'll see. Uh, maybe in twenty twenty five, the thing to watch is uh, which Republicans are going to try to 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 boot uh, E Verify out of HR two if it ever comes back. Uh, on both the Senate side, the Senate version and the House right. version. But again, I just want to come back to uh, this this idea that we are never hearing in any of these negotiations at the Senate level how they are going to compel enforcement for shutting down that border. How can, are they going to make the president follow through on his so, agreement? So when because Biden once said, the text cashed, "Yeah." I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't didn't mean to interrupt the point you were making. I just mean that Biden said it on Friday. Biden said if this law passes, that then he would shut down the border immediately. You're pointing out yeah. he's never once actually told us how he would go about doing that. That's right. And nobody's talking about that because I think everybody knows he's just going to blow it off once the checks cash for Ukraine. Right, right, which is what they really want. I mean, you had Senator Mike Rounds, a Republican suggesting that any of the um, the people who are critical of the bill right now, uh, he he thinks it's a Russian op that they're being critical of this amnesty bill, which is ridiculous. It's just the most cra- the craziest thing. And he says the reason for that is because they don't want to see the Russians don't want funding to go to Ukraine, which is why they're trying to kill this great immigration bill that we should all love, even though we haven't seen a single sentence of it in public. Yeah, I don't have anything to, you know, I mean, that's that sounds like a, a theory, but um, it's not one that it's ludicrous. <laughs> really, yeah, that really matters right now. I mean, I think that whole thing is not going to go anywhere. I don't think the House is going to vote on anything about that. It has a lot of opposition because it's it's really just bad policy. It's terrible policy when the president can just shut it down right now. Yes, uh, they need to condition any Ukraine. Uh, they need to shut. They need to condition any Ukraine money on the president first shutting down the border and then uh, they'll get their they'll get their check. Of course, use the uh, Ukraine money if Washington wants the Ukraine cash. So if they want that, use it as leverage to actually get what you want done instead of giving everything to Biden that he wants, which is an open border and Ukraine cash. Yeah, and furthermore, the CBP-1 parole authority, uh, the, the, the big win in any negotiation there is that the Biden administration appears to have been able to save this parole program where they're bringing in hundreds and hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants over the land bridges and flying them in from foreign airports uh, by the hundreds of thousands, yes. I mean, at least six or 700,000 they're bringing in there. And that's that does nothing. So if you have 5,000 a day that you're letting cross illegally, right, and then you add, uh, you know, another uh, 40,000, 50,000 to that, it's just you have a crisis. The northern cities are not going to get any relief under this uh, arrangement. Uh, they're going to still be asking for their bailouts, and yeah. they're going to get their bailout, $13 billion under this deal. Uh, and then wait for the next bailout. Right, while still declaring need. that they're sanctuary cities. Yeah, exactly. At the very at the very same moment. And you're right that 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 uh, parole program, which is basically an app that the Biden administration has established, so that people can uh, it's it's human trafficking Uber is what it is. People call up their human trafficking uh, Uber from anywhere else in the world, and then the Biden administration flies them in. That's what they've they've been doing. It's a shell game, and uh, it's a disaster, total disaster. Todd Bensman. Uh, Thank you very much, as always, from the Center for Immigration Studies for all of your excellent work and explanations. Really appreciate that, sir.